Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our roundtable discussion today. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Ongwele, the moderator of the discussion. On my left, we have a renowned academic expert in the field of food technology, Professor Tan Jie Yi from University Science of Malaysia. <laughs> on my right, on my right, we have Ms. Raihan Amani, an experienced industry expert and consultant. <laughs> and next to her, we have Ms. Noor Amira, a representative from the Consumer Association of Penang. <laughs> Welcome to our roundtable discussion today, where we, will be, where we will be tackling the topic of co colour formulation to meet the demand of clean labour products. Before we begin, allow me to explain to the audience of the floor about our topic today. Clean labour is, is a consumer driven movement where consumers demand for real food and transparency through authenticity. Consumer demands for food ingredients that are natural, easy to recognize, and no artificial ingredients or synthetic chemicals. Now, however, we know that it has never been easy for the food industry to meet the demand of clean labor. This is because color is um, especially when it comes to food coloring. Colors are widely used in the food industry to make food more appealing, correct natural color variation, and to replace color loss in the processing. Now, Ms. Amira, can you share with us your point of view about the demand of clean labor products among consumers? Yes, of course. Thank you, Ms. Moderator. Seeing is believing. I think this phrase is suitable for me as a consumer when purchasing food product. Color is the most attribute of foods and beverages. It is the first thing that we see uh, about the food product. I mean, who like to buy a box of dull and faded color of candies? And I mean, like, not many, not many people like to invest money on that, right? I know I won't. Uh, the color gives us the indication whether the food is fresh or not. And I think it's often said that we eat with our eyes first. But despite of these ways of thinking, uh, many of consumers uh, were more aware about the safety of synthetically produced food coloring and how it can impact our health. So uh, for me, I like, I like to buy a product that free from chemical additive and it's minimally, minimally processed and can easy to pronounce and understand. Usually you can find at the food product that has com uncommon and complicated names of ingredients, right? So uh, not many consumers has the knowledge of what the names really mean. Yeah, so that's why I prefer, so that's why this will affect the consumer's decision when purchasing the product. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Amira, for the heartfelt opinion. We shall hear from the experts as well. Ms. Raihan, do you have, uh, what is your opinion about this matter from the point of view of industry and manufacturers? Thank you, Ms. Moderator. Today, a growing number of consumers are now demanding foods free from artificial dyes and colors, forcing a shift away from synthetic to more natural alternative. Natural colors support the trend for cleaner ingredient levels and ingredients that are recognizable to health conscious consumers. However, natural colors have many different pigments and they also have their own functionalities and stabilities as well. This is why the manufacturers must ensure that the color system that has been selected will be stable both during processing and for desired shelf life of the product itself. Fortunately, new technologies are now available and new formats are also available such as emulsification and encapsulation and many more. So uh, manufacturers can use all of these techniques to, to get an 
optimal performance for these challenging food applications. Thank you. I see. Can you share with us the problems? <laughs> Can you share with us the problems faced by the industry when dealing with the demand of clean labor products? Yes, of course. As manufacturers begins to reformulate to create clean label products with clean ingredient labels, there are some fundamental issues that must be addressed. One of such is colorants, which what we are discussing just is right now. So, it is important to understand that there is no codified definition of natural when discussing coloring. This has, but this has become one of the difficulties for manufacturers and price is also another element contributing to this complication phase when transitioning from synthetic colors to natural colors. Another challenge scientists are met with circles back to consistency. A large goal when reformulating products line with cleaner ingredient is to do so without changing the texture, the, the flavor and appearance of the final product. Despite of these factors, um, the investment of clean label products hold the promise of increasing brand values. Every year, the clean products purchases grow and it doesn't seem to slowing down anytime soon. So I can say that the customers out there are now screaming out for clean product ingredients and the manufacturers and the industry, of course, had begun to head a call. Okay, thank you, Ms. Raihan. Now that we have heard from the industrial expert, let's hear from the academical uh, concerns about the demand of clean labor products. Prof Tan, can you explain to us on this matter? Yeah, thank you, um, Ms. Ong. As Raihan has mentioned just now about the functionality and stability of the food color application, now I will elaborate more on it. From a chemical point of view, there are, um, there are nothing that better than the synthetic. Why? It's because the synthetic is more stable and we can apply it in any application at any temperature. However, when we look at the natural color, it is less stable than the synthetic color as there are few factors that will affect the stability of it. For example, the stability, uh, solubility, pH and temperature. In solubility, um, different color have different uh, type of solubility. They are water soluble color and also the uh, oil soluble color. It is very important for us to choose the right um, type of color, stab, uh, stability of color at the initial stage in order to uh, let it mix well with the ingredients. For example, um, in the production of baked goods, it is preferable to use the um, wet, uh, to use the water soluble color to mix with the wet dough in order for them to incorporate easily uh, with the dough and the ingredients, other ingredients. Besides, um, the pH is also very crucial to be considered as it will affect the color of the uh, flavor uh, of the food. For example, turmeric can be a very can be a problem when it um, mixed with the p ingredient with high pH, for example, the baking soda. Besides, we have also the anthocyanin, which is um, do not function well when it mix around with the uh, environment in pH greater than 4.5. So um, when the anthocyanin is mixing around an acidic 
uh, environment, it is uh, it will be it will change the colors to pink and also uh, red. Besides, when it um, mix with the solution in alkaline environment, it will turn greenish yellow. Hence, you can see the color change in different pH. Moreover, um, temperature is also a crucial part uh, to be considered in the food color processing. Different color have different um, range of the optimum temperature as it will function uh, it, as it will function well in the temperature. For example, it is better to store the carotenoids below 136 degrees Celsius as in the cold, dry spaces and it will enhance its shelf life. For anthocyanin, the storage temperature is around 3 to 5 degrees Celsius. If they expose longer in an extreme environment, it will uh, cause the degradation of the color. Thank you, Prof Tan, for the very detailed explanation. So now we understand that the selection of food color needs to consider several factors such as solubility, pH, and temperature of the food process. So now, Ms. Mira, can you share with us your primary concerns when choosing clean label products? Sure. As a wellness-seeking shopper, I there's never have been a time that I want to provide my family a healthy and nutritious food. So I tend to avoid the food that has chemical additive in it uh, and artificial colorings, and just the existence on it on the food label make a one-way ticket back to the shelf. So I prefer a product that use natural colorants such as beet juice concentrated. This is because I have read in the article that artificial food can artificial coloring can cause cancer and it will cause problem for kids too, uh, including allergies. This scares me because I don't want the food that my family and I eat cause more harm than good. Uh, we eat to get its nutritious goodness, right? So that's why I prefer to buy food of that pro clean product food. Yes. When I do it. <laughs> yes, I agree that uh, most of the consumers would surely prefer the food that brings us benefit. So, Prof Tan, is it true that natural food colorant is the only way to meet the demand of clean label products? Sure, Rosang. I believe that most of the consumer will think that the natural is the best as uh, it will benefit us. Natural color is a pigment that we can obtain from the um, animal, vegetable, and also minerals. The most um, co natural color that we can see in the market is the anthocyanin, carotenoids, and also the chlorophylls. So most of the natural colorants promote the health benefits. Most of the vegetable and fruits which contain the um, polyphenol which have the antioxidant qualities so it can help to uh, fight with the free radicals and not only can prevent the cancer and also uh, heart disease but it can also prevent aging process is very important for human uh, for women <laughs> yes. for example the rate in the tomato will help to prevent the prostate gland, glands and also heart disease. For the orange in carrot, it can reduce the cholesterol and stroke. And the yellow color in corn can prevent the macular de degeneration. Since the consumer are following the trend of the healthy lifestyle, so the natural colorant is able to give the natural uh, nutritional value when you consume the food which contain the uh, natural color. 
However, do you guys know that um, the not everyone is benefited from the natural color? For example, carmine is one of the natural uh, red derived colorant from the cochineal insects. It will cause someone to have the allergy and for if serious, it will cause the anaphylactic shock for some of the consumer also. Besides, if longer exposure to the um, carmine, the, in the industry, uh, the worker will suffer the asthma disease. So it, is, it will bring harm for us uh, sometime. I see. So natural does not necessarily dictate healthy. Ms. Raihan, do you have anything to add on to Prof Tan's explanation? As in, how do manufacturers deal with the issue of um, natural food colorant demand? Sure, Ms. Ong. So over the years, many manufacturers have discovered new techniques within formulation and processing as well. Combined with the use of high-quality raw material, it is now possible to develop product with better fun functionalities. So the technologies that has been applied is micro-encapsulation, addition of antioxidants, emulsions, and oil suspensions. So as for the micro-encapsulated products, they will increase the brightness of the color. For the addition of antioxidant, definitely it will increase the food stability and shelf life. As for the emulsion technology, it enables the manufacturers to create products with various colors. And lastly, the oil suspensions, where they will give a bright appearance of color of that particular product and excellent stability as well. Thank you. Okay, I believe our experts from the industrial and academic ex uh, aspects have explained clearly on the ways for co food colorants to meet the demand of clean labor products. Now, Ms. Amira, as a consumer, has your confusions on the clean labor products been cleared up? Yes, now I know that not all natural colorants uh, are healthy and some can cause harm to some people too. Uh, I think I have a new and different perspective of clean label product from now on. But I still be believe that the food ingredient on the label should be easy to understand as not many consumer has the knowledge of scientific names label on the food product. I see. Prof Tan, can you explain to us on this matter? Yeah, thank you. Um, from what Amira has mentioned just now, it's a very common problem that meet by the consumers. As most of the consumer cannot understand the label with the uh, scientific or chemical name on the package. So, um, this is only for some of the experts or the consumer with the knowledge in that field will understand the label. So, um, in for P FDA's Code of Federal Regulations and mandates for the clean label foods, um, the name should be labeled. The color, the food color, should be labeled in the name of the raw materials, as the consumer can recognize more easily uh, when they purchase the food item. So for example, the color for the vegetable and fruit should be labeled as the fruit and vegetable color or call their specific name in their raw materials. Thank you very much, Prof Tan. I think that was very clear and clarifying. Now, allow me to draw a conclusion to our discussion today. The the demand of clean labor begins with the awareness of consumers being more, being more aware of their safety on the food consumed. However, there are also challenges faced by the food industry to meet with the demand of the consumers. 
Several aspects must be taken into account, such as the stability, sol solubility, and prices of the food colors. In order to overcome these challenges, new technologies and techniques are used to improve the stability of the food colors. Other than that, standards of the natural food colorant must also be defined clearly by policy makers. Consumers should also be um, more aware, be wise and be careful when pursuing for clean label products as we know that not all natural food colorants are suitable for everyone as some may cause um, allergy reactions. So once again, thank you to all our panelists for contributing to the discussion today. Thank you.